It is verses 47 through 58. Let us have repetitive reading. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks to be God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Amen. Let us bless each other, be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. Today is the resurrection week. The king of kings and the life of life, it is the resurrection of the Christ. It is a resurrection week where he won over death, uh, uh, where he had victory over death. And I, as we give the communion service, let us receive the greatest blessings. Today's title is The Covenant of Resurrection and the New Beginning. The Covenant of Resurrection and the New Beginning. It is Christ who has been crucified on the cross for all of our sins. And as evidence that He has fulfilled everything, the, it was the resurrection. So today is the week where we commemorate the resurrection of Christ, where He has solved all of the problems. When we believe in the resurrection of Christ, that is the true faith. And it is what is unique. And it's what is absolute. And it is what's perfect, and that is shown to us through the resurrection of Christ. If you see in 1 Corinthians 15, 14 through 19, if Jesus Christ did not have, uh, he, if, didn't, if he did not resurrect, then what we believe, it's false. And what we relay is also false. If there is no resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we are still in the midst of sin. And in the end, we will fail. So, through the resurrection, he has solved all of our pro problems. Paul 
Paul said, if we do not believe in the resurrection, then we are the most pitiful people. But Jesus Christ resurrected. And only Christianity keep the feast of the resurrection. So through the resurrection, we must hold on to three evidences. And we must have the assurance of faith. There are so many people who do not have this assurance and live their walk of faith. Because they do not have this assurance, they have no choice but to fall into concerns, worries, and anxieties, and fear. And they're continuously stressed and fall into depression. And they fall into panic disorders and insomnia, and later on, great pains come and commit suicide. What is the reason why the churches are keep closing their doors? And right now, Satan is scoffing at the church. Why is that? It is because they do not have assurance of faith. And they do not have this assurance of faith where they believe in resurrection. If you do not have this faith, or if you do not have this uh, assurance of faith, then we will perish. We have heard a lot about the ten foundations. What is amongst the ten foundation? What is the first foundation? What is it? It is the faith, or where we are able to believe in the absolute sovereignty of God. If you do not have the faith where we believe in the absolute sovereignty of God, then we will perish. The more we do not have this assurance, then it is I who keep on living. If you do not have this assurance of faith, it means that I do not have the assurance of my life. But if you do have the assurance of faith, then we have assurance inside of our lives. The first, we must be able to believe in the resurrection of Christ. And what does this mean? It is telling us that the one who sent Christ is the Creator God. How can we bring back the dead? But the Creator God is possible for him. The fact that we believe in the resurrected Christ, it means that we believe in the Creator God. The only one who could resurrect the dead, it is the Creator God. That is why the God that we believe in is the Creator God. And He is unique. And that is why we must only look to Him. In Deuteronomy 6.4 it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love and Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And also it says in Hebrews 12 too, Look into Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Why do we look to Jesus? It's because that He is the unique God. That is why we look to Jesus. And He is also absolute. So there is no impossibility in front of Him. So even resurrecting from the dead is not something that is impossible. It is because He is the Creator God. If you see in Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. 
There is nothing that's not possible for the Creator God. And He is perfect and He does not make mistakes. Philippians 1.6 and I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ so he's telling us that he has no mistakes and the one who began the good work in you will bring it to completion and the Christ who has resurrected is not just the mankind, but he is the Son of God. If it's in Romans 1.4, it says, And was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of Holiness by his resurrection from the dead Jesus Christ our Lord. How can a, the dead come back to life? Uh, I told you, uh, how can you bring back the person that is dead? It is because he is the creator God. That is why it is possible for him. How can the dead come back to life? That is because he is not a human being, but he is the Son of God. And that is why he can be the Savior to solve all, uh, save all of the people from their sins. And that is why it says in Acts 4.12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. But there is something more important. He has broken down the work of Satan and the authority of Satan, who has broke down the first Satan, uh, who has brought the first Adam to death and continuously trying to break us down. If you see in 1 John 3, 8, it says, the Son of God appeared was to destroy the work of the devil. And right now, the Satan is still robbing all of the souls. And that is why he's making the individuals and the family and even inside of the church have conflicts and keep on making people fall into their scars and bringing sicknesses to all the people. I bet you in the name of the Lord, may the forces of darkness be broken down in the name of Jesus Christ who has resurrected. The resurrection of Christ means that he has broke down the work of Satan. Right now, the one who has the authority of death is Satan. But resurrection of Christ means that he has won over and have victory over death and crushed the head of Satan. But not believing in this, we are making the partisans where we have no choice but to fail. I bless you in the name of the Lord may the blessing where the resurrected Christ break down the bison of Satan inside of you and the, resur the resurrection of Christ is the evidence that God fulfills his promise if you see in 1 Corinthians 15.3, it says, For I delivered to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scripture. He, as promised, 
He has come, and as promised, He was crucified, and as promised, He has resurrected, and as promised, He has finished everything. But there is one thing that is left, and that is Acts 1.11. It means that He will come back. The resurrected Christ will come back as the Lord of the Judgment. And for that, we just have to begin anew. He's the Creator God. He's not a human being, but as God, He has come to this land. And He has fulfilled all of what He has promised. And later on, He will come back as the Lord of the Judgment. Then inside of that, we hold on to the power of the resurrected Christ and begin anew. And with the evidence that Christ has resurrected, we begin anew. So we must have three new beginnings. There's something that we must hold on to. The resurrection means it is the covenant that where we can begin anew. The new beginning of this land is inside of the resurrection. And here, if you see in verse 47, there is a man of dust and the man from heaven. It says, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So the first Adam, he was from the dust. And what we receive from him is just the curse of the original sin. But in the opposite sense, Christ, he is from heaven. And whoever is inside of Christ, then he belongs in the kingdom of God. That is why the moment we believe in and accept Christ inside of us, then we receive the life of heaven. And we call that the spiritual life. It is the life born again, and it is the life where the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. That is why if you see in John 3, 5, it says, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, and if you see in 1 Corinthians 3, 16, it says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and the God's Spirit dwells in you? The moment we receive and accept Jesus Christ, we receive the life of God. And that is the eternal life and the life, the spiritual life, and it is the life where the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. Then no matter what the case, we can start anew or begin anew inside of this land. No matter what kind of curses that we may befall us, we can hold on to the resurrection of Christ and start anew. That is why if you see in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. What kind of pain are we inside? What kind of scars do we have? It is okay. If you are inside of Christ, then God will change all of that into blessings. But if you do not have this answer, then inside of this land, we receive scars. And through that scars, we receive trauma. And we will receive critical attacks from Satan and face spiritual problems. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you hold on to the resurrect, the covenant of the resurrected Christ, no matter what kind of despair you may be in. 
Because the resurrected Christ is with us, though we want to perish, we cannot perish. That is why in the Bible it says, in verse 55, it says, Oh, death, where is your victory? Let us read together verse 55. It is very important. Let us read together, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? What mankind cannot solve, it is death. But Christ has given us the victory over death. So no matter what kind of despair we may be in, when we hold on to the covenant of the resurrected Christ, we will have victory. It says, oh death, where is your victory? So because of Christ, death cannot do anything to us. So as we receive this blessing and enjoy this blessing, and as we live on, we are able to save the people just like me. It is a covenant where we start anew with Christ. And it is the life that is given to us where we are able to begin anew as evangelists where we save the world. For us, it was a life where we can just barely scrape by of making a living. All of our interest was in how can we have success or what can, we'll eat or drink. But after meeting God, uh, Christ, that is not it. When Jesus came and called the disciples, He said, I will make you the fishermen of men. And as He resurrected, He has again confirm that covenant. And that is why if you see Matthew 28, 18, it says, and it says, go to all nations. And Mark 16, 15, it says, go into all of the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. This is the covenant where he says, I'll make you the fisherman of men. And through the resurrection of Christ, he again confirmed this covenant. Still though, there were people who were assuming, but the resurrected Christ came and he has confirmed and told them that they, and they changed as the people who saved the world. So just like Paul, who went up against God and persecuted the church, even though you're a person like that, it doesn't matter because on the way to the Damascus, he met the resurrected Christ. And later on, he was able to relay this gospel to the Gentiles and even the kings. And he even went before the Caesar and proclaimed this gospel. But who did God place this Paul to? We must be able to know if you're in midst of uh, if you're inside of the resurrected Christ, then this blessing is given to us and we are the evangelists. Even though the people, the evangelist was in the midst of persecution, Ananias, he was praying for the, this evangelist and that is when God placed Paul to Ananias. And when we are holding on to the covenant and truly praying for the disciple to evangelize, then God will place this evangelist, this disciple, like Paul, to us. 
and we are able to meet these disciples inside of the field. And God will lead us so that we can meet the teams where we have no choice but to receive blessings. And God will make it so that everything becomes a blessing to us. We have, on April 29 through 30, we have the Presbytery Camp that is taking place. And we are preparing for that. And through, on Monday, through the gathering of the exhorts, we will have this meeting. And on the Friday night prayer service, we had time where we can share the prayer topics of this Presbytery camp. If through the resurrection of Christ you have become the evangelist, then God will absolutely place you the disciples and give you the blessing of meeting. So truly pray for the camp. And all of the believers, may you attend this camp. Last week, the pastor told us in Daegu Presbytery Church, this camp is taking place inside of our church 17 years. So all of the people must come together and attend this camp. Do you do you have the assurance that God has called you as an evangelist? Then truly pray, and then God will place disciples like Paul to you. Because the resurrected Christ is still living and is working inside of us, then who will the Christ place the disciple to you? God will absolutely place the, and give you the blessing of meeting where you can make this a system where you can save people and save the world. So during the camps, it was a time where we were able to confirm the answers. There was an answer that was given to me that I cannot forget. There was this one person who was continuously praying for the camp. And this person went inside of that field and went around and praying. But I, I heard a forum when, he went, uh, when this person went in and came back. We met a person where 30 years ago they were the, in the same school and when he went inside of the camp he, he was able to meet that person. As he went inside of the field and analyzed that field he was able to find his uh, friend that was close with him 30 years, 30 years ago. And this person accepted the gospel and and he was he said he would devote himself for the gospel though they were in the same neighborhood they could not meet for 30 years but he held on to the camp and when inside of that field he was able to find and meet his friend. And God has blessed him with the blessing of meeting. And that's the forum that he gave. God is right now preparing the disciples inside of the field. And who is at work? It is Christ. And he will give you the blessing of meeting where you're able to meet the true disciples inside of the field. To Ananias who was holding on to 
the covenant of the disciple, God placed Paul to that Ananias. If we do not have this blessing of meeting, then the walk of faith that we are living, it is the walk of faith of failure. But when we are able to have this blessing of meeting, to save the world, we are able to receive all of the blessings. Third, the resurrection is the new beginning of this, this world and is the new beginning of where we are able to live as evangelists and it is the new beginning of living of that eternal land. When Christ comes back, all of the people come back to life. Even the people, the non-believers, come back to life. In John 5, 28, verses, verses uh, 28 through 29, everybody will come back to life. And those who do not believe will face eternal judgment. We do not receive judgment. Christ has opened up the way where we can have our sins solved. But it is the sin ignoring that salvation. But for us, how is it? All of the sins and curses that we have to face, Christ has died for us. He has received all of the punishments that I had to face and has liberated us from that and has given us true freedom. So I really hope that you look to the Lord and truly have victory inside of your life. So in today's passage, you can see that he says to have victory of today. So in verse 57, it says, But thanks to be God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And through the evangelist Paul, God is telling us in verse 58, Said, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So he's telling us, do not be hindered. And we must do an abounding in the work of the Lord. And what does it say? Our labor is not in vain. It says, knowing that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. I'll come to the end of my words. Christ has resurrected. And He is still alive. He's unique, He's absolute, and He's perfect. What kind of pain and suffering are we inside? What kind of scars or despairs are we in? I bless you in the name of the Lord, holding on to the covenant of the resurrected Christ. May you have true victory. And we will have the communion service. We'll take a look at the prayer topics first. It is the prayer of the evangelist who holds on to the covenant of resurrection. Let us be able to begin anew, holding on to the resurrected Christ, that God fulfills His promise. And what kind of problems, pains, or scars, or